Live from a secret location somewhere in Northeast Wisconsin, it's Clubhouse Live, the virtual show. We'll look back on how the Packers fared with our co-host, Alan Lazard. We'll talk football. We'll take a peek at what's next on the schedule, and we'll have our usual fun, too. We're ready. Alan's ready. Are you ready? It's time to get started. Let's open the doors and welcome to... All right, what's going on, everybody? We made it. We made it. We made it. Take a deep breath, everybody, <laughs> and uh, relax. Hey, uh, welcome back to Clubhouse Live, the virtual show. We are, again, 10th floor bubble, still somewhere in northeast Wisconsin, our secret location. I am Breck Christofferson with USA Today Network, Wisconsin. Let's hear the virtual cheers. How's everybody doing out there tonight? I want to hear you loud and proud, yes. Normally, I would introduce. I'm going to do this real quick because yes. we're in a two minute drill here. I'll, I'll explain the format change here in a little, a little bit. But this oh. is Chicago Bears fan Ricardo Arguello. He is back, everybody. You can let him have it. But my Bears minute. No, you don't get a Bears minute. Maybe, Rosie, put up the uh, what we all think about the Chicago Bears uh, right now as you talk about your Bears minute here. Man, Maybe he'll get to it here in a little <laughs> little minute. It's something that there it is. No, come That's on. That's what the Bears still a, and Mean Gene would finish it up. Let me tell you, this is a family show. Good luck to your Bears beating yes. uh, New Orleans. Not. Big That's dance, not going to happen. Hey, let's talk Green Bay Packers 35, Chicago Bears 16. Let's hear the cheers uh, uh, for that big win yesterday. The top seed is secured in the NFC. The road to the Super Bowl goes through Lambeau Field. It's going to be cold. It's going to be snowy. It's going to be like the Ice Bowl uh, come playoff time. Aaron Rodgers, how about that guy? 48 touchdown passes, a uh, franchise record, career record. Devontae Adams now has the career franchise receptions total, tied for the most touchdowns in a single season in franchise history. Chris Barnes, a big day. Adrian Amos, a big day uh, defensively. So the playoffs are up next, but first uh, a bye. 13 in the wagon, playoffs still lagging. Hey, Packers have now won 10 of 11 against the Bears in Soldier Field. Ricardo, take that. Happy Vince is here. He loves it. He loves beating the Bears, and he loves when our co-host is here. It is Green Bay Packers wide receiver Alan Lazard. He's out there somewhere. There's the Lizard. And we've got a mega show, and everybody's in studio. It's situated. It is Green Bay Packers quarterback and wide receiver Aaron Rodgers. And Devontae Adams, there's Aaron Rodgers. He's out there. We'll get to him the intro here in a second. And number 17 yeah. is hanging out with us as well. Devontae Adams, everybody. Ricardo, quickly, it is an interactive show. That's right. So we invite your comments, your questions through that live chat. That can be found online next to our video viewer. I am, no, uh, not me. My man, Jake Prinzens, he's monitoring that chat. He'll really relay those comments and questions over to us. Now, Aaron and Devante have to get going a little bit earlier than uh, than uh, our show is scheduled, so we're going to kind of change up the format here a little bit. We're going to get them onto the stage or our virtual stage virtual here stage. right now. So let me do the uh, proper intro for the guys. Our guest tonight, one is in his seventh season, all with the Packers. The other, 16th season, all with the Packers. One was selected by the Packers, second round of the 2014 NFL Draft. The other was selected by the Packers, in the first round of the 05 NFL Draft. One has started in the 14 games in which he has appeared this season, finishes the regular season with a team record, 115 receptions, 1,374 yards, 18 touchdowns, which is tied for the most in a single season in franchise history. The other has started at quarterback in all 16 games this season, finishes the regular season slate with a franchise record, 48 TDs, 4,299 yards, and a career-best 71% completion percentage and the league's best passer rating, 121.5. One is the NFL's best wide receiver. He's on the shortlist, Ricardo, for Offensive Player of the Year honors. The other, of course, is having a most valuable player season. And together, they're the Pistons of a Packers offense that finished with 66 touchdowns scored. That's the second most in franchise history. And atop the league in points scored. How about a Clubhouse Live virtual welcome, first for our co-host, the Lizard, Alan Lazard, and our guest tonight, Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay Packers wide receiver Devontae Adams. Let's get them all onto the screen. <laughs> we got two of them. Oh, listen. 
I hear the MVP chants in the crowd. I love it. Okay. Gentlemen, Aaron, Devante, Allen, there he is, the lizard. Thanks for being on the show, fellas. How's everybody doing tonight? Doing really good. Doing good, doing good. Everybody wants to know, Allen, how in the world did you finagle this tonight, getting Aaron (laughs) Rodgers and Devontae Adams on the show? What did you promise them? Yes. Um, You know, luckily I didn't get to that part of my uh, interrogation plan. I just friendly went up to both of them and asked them personally, and they both agreed to it. Um, Pretty instantaneous. So thank you, both of you, for uh, joining us tonight. Absolutely. It's great to have the guys on. I'm going to start with Aaron and Devontae. And then when they leave, uh, Alan, we'll have our our, our segment to, together talk a little bit about the uh, game and, and that uh, fun stuff. But Aaron, let's start with you. We'll go to Devontae. Do you have a message for Chicago Bears fan Ricardo Arguello? Never heard of him. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't. But, uh, no, I remember Ricardo from way yes. back. <laughs> still, he's still running his mouth. <laughs> yes, he is. He was talking big stuff, big time. Uh, I'm thinking, running my uh, mouth. I'm keeping yeah. it real. As a, as a kid, I'm say. sure you are. Yeah, just like every every other Bears fan out there, right? <laughs> Ooh, start yeah, it off. It with up. This is our year. Finish it off with uh, next year. We'll get him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're we're eternal optimists. Yeah, you, know? you are every year. Hey, yeah. Devontae. Yeah. Devontae, what do you have to say to the Ricardo the Bears fan? Come on. Um, I mean, I feel I feel sorry for you, honestly. I won't even I won't beat up on you too much. I feel sorry for you. Um, obviously, this is a good uh good situation for you with them being in the playoffs, but heading down to New Orleans, I mean I, I wish them luck, but uh um they're definitely gonna need it out there. We'll say that much. Well, Devontae. Thank you. Being very uh, gracious, a backhanded, but thank you. It is you. a backhanded compliment. Okay, yeah, no doubt about it. Now, Aaron, we got to we got to clear the air here, and we're going to get back to Ricardo here, and we're going to we're going to get through this quickly. December tenth, twenty twelve, a date that lives in Clubhouse Live infamy. You were a special guest that night that, that night on our show. Tom Crabtree was Tom Crabtree. our co-host. Remember the Puma, uh, a longtime Packers uh, fan favorite. We had you sign a mural behind the bar of yourself. We unveiled it to you. You're escaping the pass rush of Jared Allen. And on your way back, you yes. passed Ricardo. Ricardo has since, in the eight years since you were on that show, that you punched him. Punched me. In the, back, in the backside. In the left cheek. That's all he ever talks about now. Now, Aaron, before we ask you to respond to these accusations and to clear the air once and for all, I've studied the film like the Zabruder film. <laughs> I have looked at frame by frame to see if I can actually see it happen. Ricard, uh, Rosie, throw up the pictures maybe of Aaron here. There's Aaron. There's picture number one. You're kind of slapping ha- uh, hands uh, five with a fan. And there's the other one. And then yes. a, a couple frames after that, Aaron disappears. Yes. However, the audio does catch yes. Ricardo saying, come on, man. Hey, or hey, man, come on. Which might indicate that maybe yes. Aaron did do something to you. That- I don't believe Aaron punched you in the behind so Aaron for the record did you or did you not punch Ricardo I would have would have had to bend down so low I don't think that's possible oh, you know, we'll oh, still, oh. Uh, we'll let me tell you. after the game so there's there's no way I would have been able to do that it's now done. he punched me in the left buttock it's done and I'm telling you I was just worried that you were going to hurt your, your wrist, you know, on the buns of steel there, my friend. I'm just glad no one got hurt. He said he didn't. Oh, you can happened. stop lying about it. It's good done. to see you. Hey, Ricardo, it's good to see you only put on a COVID-15, not a COVID-30. Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. That Bunch hurts. of zingers. I know. They're on to you. They're, they're they are. Gonna, they they're are. They're going to rip on you all night long, and you know the clubhouse fans love it. So. Let's talk. Uh, let's get a little serious, but still have some fun at the same time. Alan, let's get to you. What have these two guys meant to you in your development as a wide receiver and as a professional football player? Yeah, well, I'll start with Devontae. Obviously, him being in my room, um, looking up to him really since I first got in here um, to Green Bay, just being able to try to model my game and steal as much as I can from him. I'm really trying to integrate it into my game. Um, and then Aaron, obviously, um, just his leadership, um, just kind of be able to take me underneath his wings. At least I'm here. 
um, and just be able to find, follow both of their guidance and their leadership every single day. Um, and then obviously both of them have very high expectations for me, so making sure that I don't let them down and I don't let the rest of the team down as well. Aaron, what uh, Allen has been called an unsung hero of the offense. I know you've talked about him uh, from time to time this season, but uh, what does he mean to the success that you guys have had? He might not have the flashy stats, but he does a lot of the dirty work, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. You know, I've, I've talked at length about how, for whatever reason, there's a stigma around role players in different sports. Like that's a bad thing. Uh, but in Green Bay, we try and you know encourage guys to we first give them a role, and second, to encourage them to embrace that role. And Allen has had a role for us uh, really since uh, get 13 in the game. Uh, Detroit last year um, happened. And his role has been to be an enforcer in a run game and to do uh, a lot of things that don't show up in the stat book. And then, you know, uh, make plays when he gets his opportunities. You know, I feel like, as usual, you know, there was a number of plays yesterday that he made, some that show up in the stat book and some that uh, show up on the film that we all watch and we all appreciate. Um, there's, you know, an important role in our offense for him and, He's made a lot of plays for us this season, uh, and he'll continue to as as, uh, as long as he's healthy. When he's healthy, man, he's a big part of our of what we're doing. Devonte, your take on number thirteen? What does he mean to your wide receiver room? Well, he he means he means everything to it. Honestly, um, having him around has made my job much easier. Um, you know, they they call him a goon for a reason. You know, we got a, a certain personnel package where. It's called uh, Eleven Goon, and it's it's him and um, two other guys in there that are you know that that don't mind throwing their their nose in there and going to block a you know a, a DN a linebacker safety um, all of that type of stuff. And I think he gets a lot of credit for that, which is great, but he doesn't get enough credit for what he can do as a pass catcher as well. I think obviously with me being featured in his offense a lot of the time, people forget what he's able to do and what he does consistently, which is catch the ball really well and fight for extra yardage and I've seen um, him continue to evolve in that way um, since he's been here with a little bit of positive reinforcement you know he had a few plays um, things last year catching balls on the sideline and then getting another six seven yards just by bullying the guy so I think he's kind of stepped up and owned that as kind of his identity um, on the field and you know there's a lot of trash talking and stuff that goes on on the field but I've noticed that my trash talking has gone down a lot this year because of Alan being out there and people not really worried about me and, and chirping at me. Alan's over there just just antagonizing the, the defense, and you can see him getting under the skin, and it does a lot for us, and, uh, being able to take guys out of their element a little bit. So, um, yeah, he, we utilize him in a bunch of different ways, and he, uh, whatever he's doing, he's making sure he's being impactful out there. Alan, you haven't told us you're a trash talker. Come on, I've asked you about that. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really. I don't no, forcefully go out there and want to talk. He doesn't talk a whole lot. He just what he does and the way he oh. plays. For some reason, he gets our he, first skin and then. He talks a lot. What are yeah. you talking about? He definitely talks a lot. <laughs> he, well, I mean, sometimes it's not always talking. Game sometimes talking. it's. Yeah, sometimes it sounds though like when the guy said that he was a dog. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> And Alan did this high pitched yip back to him like he was a little his little chihuahua yip. Bro, Yorkie. I I lost it when I heard that, man. That was awesome. <laughs> but most of my stuff is, is responsive. It's not like I'm going out of my way to trash talk or impose my will. It's just I play the game and then if someone has something to say, then yeah, I'm I'm more than likely to have my opinion as well. I want, I want him. There you go. Right. I mean, uh, that's just how it goes, right, Ricardo? But I want to ask you guys, let's start with Aaron again. How have you guys been able to build such a, a close team, you know, the, the close-knit, the, the bonding, the, the team chemistry during this COVID era where you're not really able to hang out a whole lot? Uh, how, how have you guys been able to cultivate that? Yeah, it's been, it's been really strange, uh, especially uh, with the – Things I've done in the locker room, you know, putting dividers between every locker, and yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been a stretch for all of us this year. But you know, we already had a good framework uh, 
you know, hanging out and, and, and good relationships. I do, I do definitely miss the opportunities to eat together on the road or get together during the week. Uh, you know, Friday night hangouts, whatever it might be, just where you can kind of see the guys outside of a work environment where kind of relax a little bit more and enjoy each other's company and blow off some steam from whatever happened that week. So it's it's been uh, – that's taken away some of the fun, I think, of the season. But, you know, we're pros, and we, we've just gotten our work done and, and worked on those relationships and the chemistry during the during the weeks. Devonta, I'm going to ask you uh, this next question. Something that actually Aaron said uh, after yesterday's game, just kind of understanding, acknowledging how difficult this has been, uh, this, this, this time period for so many people, regardless of what they do. So I'm wondering, how does it make you feel um, knowing that what you guys have been doing this season provides a sense of relief for people, just an escape? They just want to get away from the real-world problems and here you guys are having a historic season, 13 games, top seed. What does that mean to you knowing that you're providing joy for, for people in such a challenging time? Um, I mean, it means a lot. It would mean more if we could, you know, if we had them present at the games. Um, you know, that would be even even more. We, I think we as players would feel it a little bit more. Um, but obviously an escape for them during a time like this, it, it makes us feel good to know that we can do it. We obviously have a great time going out there and doing it and just kind of having COVID being, being what it's been uh, since before OTAs and not being able to have that period. I think that coming back out here um, during camp and throughout the season, has kind of pushed us a little bit more to connect, you know, through meetings or just being at the stadium because we missed out on some time. So we kind of had to, make up for that lost time and um yeah i mean we we just enjoy connecting with each other going out and playing ball and it's also an escape for us so you know if it helps our fans in the in the meantime then you know that's that's even better let's do one more question what were you guys looking at you guys how much time do you have we, we still got to play our, our, our regular clubhouse live challenge right alan we got to get that in before the guys leave right need my dog yeah, you need your, you're, you've been red hot. You went, we won two, uh, like two months straight. So let's ask this uh, question for both guys, and we'll play the game, and then uh, we'll let the, the guys uh, get out of here because I know they're busy. But um, this was not a, a, a certainty. Uh, th- this was an unknown when you guys reported to training camp. I'll start with Aaron. Are you at all amazed that you're at this point, you got through the regular season in a COVID, once-in-a-lifetime pandemic, and not only have you gotten through the season, You've had a historic season, played at a high level, and you've really avoided almost all of this, the distractions that have come with, with what's going on. I, I, you look back and reflect and think, man, I can't believe we're here. Did you envision being here in, in, back in July, August? I mean, I didn't necessarily envision being here based on what we were told. Um, just even with the testing, I thought the testing – with the percentages being down, would start to wane a little bit. We wouldn't have to test every single day. We'd start to get fans back in the stadium, you know, by midseason. I remember when they announced there weren't going to be fans for the first two games. I think everybody was uh, was thinking, oh, well, I'm sure by the time we get to like week six or whatever it was, when we got back home, there'd be fans. So it's been strange to, you know, be here, but still not, you know, play in front of uh, any fans at home this season yet. Uh, that's been strange just because I didn't feel like in March, you know, when this thing started heating up, uh, you know, I just felt like, you know, we were kind of uh, quarantining ourselves to kind of flatten the curve or whatever. And uh, after that happened, uh, you know, it's kind of stayed the same, same rules uh, throughout the summer and, and fall as well. Last one, Devante, what did it mean for uh, Aaron? Aaron said it last night that he came up to you after the game and said, 13 and a half games, you've just had the best season by a Packer receiver in team history. What did that what did that mean to you? And have you had time since to kind of reflect on that and think, yeah, I had I I'm right up there with some of the greats. I mean, one of the one of the receivers uh, has a bu- building named uh, after him across the street from the stadium. What did that mean to you to have your quarterback tell you that? It means a lot, man. Obviously, um, you know, it's it's nothing that I really take a I don't like to take too many steps back during the during the season, especially going into going into the 
smell the roses, but um, you know, it's it's good to reflect every now and then and and um, look at what you've done as a team, what you've done individually, and just kind of feel good about yourself. And obviously, um, you know, we've done a lot collectively to to feel good about. But I mean, one of the things, and I, I think that Aaron knows it. Obviously, Alan knows it. He's he's been around um, for a little quick minute now. But um, I mean, I feel like we play our best ball, uh, Aaron and I, when it comes to these January playoff games. So, um, you know, I can, it's, it's good to feel good about those. But now that all the regular season stuff's out the way, we don't have to try to crunch any, you know, to, to get any records and all that stuff, which none of it was stressed. So that's the good thing. It all came real natural and, um, you know, within the flow of the game, as, as Aaron likes to say. But, you know, coming into these games now, these are the ones that we really got to, we really got to get after and make sure we go finish, um, you know, we measure our success short term. We don't like to look at just how the season's going because, you know, if you're having um, confidence issues or something like that, it's good to look back and see what you've done and kind of feel good about yourself. But right now, we got a full head of steam and doing a lot of good stuff. So we just want to keep that going and, and finish the season right. All right. Good stuff with Aaron Rodgers tonight, Devontae Adams. Uh, they got to get going here in a little bit. So how about a virtual round of applause for the guys? But uh, before they go, I got to throw the challenge flag, Alan. It is time for tonight's Clubhouse Live Challenge. Uh, we got to get this uh, game. Alan's been talking a lot of trash about how good he is playing. How well do you know? It's a rapid fire trivia contest in which I will ask you five questions. They each pertain to the same category. If you think you know the answer, just going to have you raise your hand tonight. That's all. No, no dinging or anything. Just raise okay. your hand. The category, uh, I'll tell you guys in a second, but we have three playing partners for the three guys, and all, all of them will go home with the signed photo from the lizard, <laughs> Alan Lazard. Nice. This game tonight isn't for prizes. It is for oh, bragging yeah. rights. Simply bragging rights. The two wide receivers going against the quarterback. Now, I know you all are big basketball fans, right? I know you all love hoops, love to play hoops. So tonight's category, quickly, the NBA. The NBA. How well do you know the NBA? So... How you feeling about that, Lizard? You feeling like your 10-game winning streak will extend to 11? Absolutely. Absolutely. Each, Two and a half months. It's been almost un, It's been an Aaron Rodgers-like, Devontae Adams-like performance in how well do you know. It's incredible uh, high level uh, that he's playing at. Each question is worth one point. There will be then a bonus question after the five questions have been asked of a point total that I'll determine to make sure Allen wins the game because he's the star of the show. It's his show. So, again, the category is NBA. If you think you know the answer, raise your hand. Question number one. This legendary big man was known for his signature skyhook shot. Aaron Rodgers. Oh, yeah. uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Ricardo, score. That's one butt punch for Aaron <laughs> And nothing <laughs> for Allen and Devontae. We would have that accepted is, Lou Alcindor as well. Half of his, oh. That is only half of his name, by the way. Does he know <laughs> the other um, name that he came into the league with? So he just said it, though. Go ahead, Devontae. He just said it, Lou Alcindor. Yeah. Who's, oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear it. See, okay. I was, Bucks and Lakers uh, star. That's right. Everybody, some people forget he played for the Bucks. So question number two. Speaking of the Lakers, right? Yes. They got their start in this Midwestern city before moving to Los Angeles. Aaron Rodgers. Oh. Uh, Minneapolis. Ricardo score. Wow. Two butt punches for Aaron. He gets the bell. Nothing for anybody else. Mm -hmm. Allen, you're behind, my friend. Minneapolis Lakers. George Mikan led Minneapolis yeah. Lakers. All right, question number three. We got to get through this. The fantastic documentary, we all watched it, The Last Dance, right? Chronicled the Michael Jordan-led Bulls dynasty of the <laughs> 1990s. How many finals championships did those Bulls teams win? Ding. Alan Lazard. Six. Yes, yes. Ricardo scores. That's right. So Aaron, two. Devontae, one. Or, I'm sorry, Alan, one. Devontae, nothing. Two, one, zero. Yes. Three question, and three. But... And then the Rockets won two in the in, yeah. in between that. Question number four. In what city do the Golden State Warriors play their home games? What city? Devontae. Whoa. San Francisco. Yes, yes, that was a trick question, and he got it. Yes, so two for Aaron, one each for Allen and Devontae. Moved from Oakland last season to San Francisco. So here we go. Question number five. This current Brooklyn Nets point guard starred as street ball legend. Yes. Whoa. Devontae. Devontae. Right? 
Yes, he got wow. it. Kyrie Irving. This was a good game. Well, two points for Aaron, two for Devontae, one for Allen. That makes this bonus question worth two points. Yes. Here we go. Listen closely. What is the name of Giannis Antetokounmpo's signature Nike shoe? Devontae. Ooh. Zoom Freak 1. He oh! got it. He got it. <laughs> Devontae with a big comeback. And he wins. How well do you know the Zoom Freak? I like that. I like that question. Antetokounmpo. Wow. What a comeback for number 17. Yeah. So, Devontae, you were playing for Tim West. Tim West is going home with this. Aaron, you were playing for Arthur Valentine. Alan, you were playing for Pam Miller. How about that? Alan, Alan had to land. Your had to end sometime. Is over. Sorry, Arthur. It was part of the deal of getting them on here. You know, I was <laughs> okay. going to take a little bit lighter on the challenge. Very good. Well, I, I think uh, sure our time is up with the guys. I know we had to fly through it. So, uh, Devante, congratulations on a phenomenal season. Good luck to you uh, to you in the playoffs. Uh, look forward to watching Thank you, you uh, down the road here, maybe into February, Ricardo. And Aaron, same to you. We appreciate you for coming on. And if you have one last zinger for Ricardo, now's the time to say it. Divisional playoffs. We'll see you, Aaron. <laughs> We hope so. I got, nothing, I got nothing for him. Man. I, I don't need to dunk on right. him one more time. <laughs> All right, fellas. Uh, appreciate you uh, being on. We know you got to get going. So uh, thank, thank you, you guys. for being on. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. All right, guys. All right, Alan. We did it. Nice. Did it. We are reformatting Sorry, the show. We did, it. we did it. I know the guys had to get going. Hopefully we didn't keep him too long. And thank heavens, Devontae got his computer <laughs> to rotate. Otherwise, he would have been displayed upside down. That was the holdup, everybody. Yeah, that was a little bit of a mishap, but we were able to work through it and have a great show. Still okay. here. We've got some questions in, some of the questions I wanted to get in. So uh, let's talk to our co-host. Yeah. Let's get a virtual round of applause. Jeff, before you start, we have fans watching everywhere, by the way. Elk Grove, California, Nashville, Tennessee, Kansas City, Missouri, and Brazil. They speak Portuguese over there, you know that. Bro. Yeah. But all over the world. We get them all over, from all over the world. All over the world tonight. So, again, the guys uh, had some other uh, things uh, coming up, right, Alan? So they had to get going here. Uh, could only be on for the first half of the show. So that's why we're kind of bouncing around. But we appreciate your time. And you are now, Alan, forever a Clubhouse Live legend. You are a legend. You are a legend on this show. <laughs> Only one other guy has gotten Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams on the show. That was John Kuhn, the general. I thought you said Crabtree. Oh, that's right. Crabtree got, got uh, Rodgers on. Okay. But never has anybody gotten the guys on at the same time. That puts Alan Lazard on the Mount Rushmore of Clubhouse Live yes, co-hosts. Yes, Without a doubt. So congratulations to it. you. Pat yourself Thank on the you. back, would you? <laughs> there we, we go. go. Hey, let's do a uh, let's do a stat pack here. I'm just kind of bouncing around all over the script here. Aaron Rodgers' 48 touchdown Love passes it. ended up being two more than the total number of J.K. Scott punts this season. He had more touchdowns than J.K. Scott punts. Aaron now has 56 career games with at least three touchdown passes and no interceptions, which is the second most the NFL uh, in the in the NFL since the 1950 season. And the 14 games in which he has recorded a passer rating of 100 or more this year are the most in a single season in the Super Bowl era. Also, Devontae Adams and Sterling Sharp are the only players in team history to produce two 100-plus catch seasons. And Devontae currently ranks fourth in team history in career receptions with 546. He'll leap past Jordy Nelson and Sterling Sharp into second place on that list sometime next season. So... Uh, Alan, you're right there with these guys. You see it every day, but you got to step back and, and just say, man, I mean, they're they're keeping the Packers PR staff busy. They're rewriting the the, the media guide, the record books. Yeah, yeah, both of them. Um, I think it just goes to show you of the type of athlete, the type of person they are, um, and really just, I know, how talented they are. For them to come out and have such a historic year, um, obviously football is probably the ultimate team sport. Those two guys, individual success, you know, um, the team wouldn't have the success that we were where we are today without those two guys and um, what they're able to do on, out there on the field. So it's it's a blessing to be able to to watch from a distance, um, to be able to appreciate as a fan um, 
as a, as a fan of football um, and those two guys as well, watching, you know, as I've been growing up and everything to sit here playing with them um, on Sundays, being able to, to learn from them, you know, they're, they're different, the different teachings, um, the different techniques for, for whatever it may be. Um, it's, it's very humbling and, and, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to play alongside them and, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's great going to work with them every single day and, and be able to go out there and, uh, to play with them. Well, what's really cool from our standpoint, obviously, is to hear how much they respect you and, uh, how yeah. much you mean. I think sometimes, uh, people get too caught up on the flashy stats, right? And don't understand all the little things uh, that, that lead to the big things, right? I mean, that's kind of really what the game of football is all about. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. You know, I think that's something that really, since I've gotten here in Green Bay, that's something I've really focused on is, is the little small details um, of the game, especially as a wide receiver, wide receiver position. Um, you know, they've, I think they've, they've made me a lot more versatile this year and really kind of as my career has gone on of asking me to do more and um, to be able to go out there to, to be able to do those things, you know, it takes a lot of concentration and a lot of will. But, you know, I think it's, it's more so of the want to be able to go out there to do that and the, the mindset to be able to that. No matter what they ask of me, I can go out there and be the best at doing it. Now, I wanted to ask you, uh, we're going to get to your segment. Again, we're working backwards today to uh, accommodate uh, Aaron and Devante. Um, cameras yesterday, uh, Alan, caught you getting in the way of Akeem <laughs> Hicks and Lucas Patrick. <laughs> now, I'm just going to maybe ask that next time that that happens, especially when it comes to somebody of the caliber of an Akeem Hicks. Uh, the, the size, you mean? The si Maybe just let him keep swinging so he gets kicked out of the game. <laughs> let the fight escalate, <laughs> Alan. I don't know what you were doing stepping in there. What were you thinking? Uh, yeah, I mean, first and foremost, you know, I'm going to protect all my teammates and my brothers out there. So I saw a couple friendly um, hand gestures being placed on his face mask. I guess you could say um, that probably shouldn't belong there, but you know that's part of the game too of just you know two two very skilled aggressive guys and you know they're going out of every single play so it's just kind of a nature of the game to be able to get in scuffles like that. Um, me personally, you know, I was trying to step in and obviously if it got a little bit more violent and hectic, um, I would react accordingly um, to the environment, but definitely not trying to get in the way of of big guys like that getting after it. Cardo, what do you have to say for your your, your stellar defensive uh, lineman trying to pick a fight. Would, he should have been kicked out. <laughs> well, I don't know if he should have been kicked out, but it, that was not a smart move given that he is so essential to their defense. So, yeah, not a smart move. <laughs> you don't want to get in the way of two big dancing bears like that, Alan. You can get hurt, man. I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty big myself, you know. So, like I said, <laughs> like Devontae, like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't go out searching for stuff. You know, I'm just out there to to resolve the issues and, and to make sure the Packers come out with the dub. So, okay. whatever it takes. Well, the way Aaron made it sound like you 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 speak in high pitched squeals out there. So I don't know what's going <laughs> hey. on with you. What's going on? I have this vision of big that, that tough was, Alan Lazard. That was more so someone was claiming that they were a dog, um, verbatim. And that they're tough and everything, and so I was mimicking with my voice of what kind of dog they were. Oh, which been like a, I got you. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that's that's where that whole story. Um, unfolds. That's good. That's a good. See the inside good clarification. Mm -hmm. good. No, we didn't uh, get your take, Alan, or, or your message to Ricardo. We asked Aaron. We asked Devante. What do you have to say to Ricardo the Bear fan after that shellacking yesterday? What not shellacking? It was a good it was game. too. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it's obviously, for me personally, going into the game, um, just thinking about my first time playing there, being the first game of the season last year, and to see, kind of just thinking about how the past two years have unfolded and everything. Um, it was kind of just like a humbling moment just being there at the stadium and everything, warming up for the game. Um, obviously, last time, it was the opening kickoff of the season. This time, it's you know we're finishing week 17 of the regular season. There's no fans. There's no the media is obviously very uh, watered down and everything there. So it just it just gave me a lot of perspective on how fast things in life can change and how to keep moving forward um, regardless of whatever happens to you. You're kind of liking this media thing, right? Yeah. Where you don't have to stand in front of your locker with, a, with about 40. Uh, cameras and microphones in your face 
You kind of like this uh, yeah. Zoom stuff, don't you? It's a little bit easier getting undressed after the games and stuff, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Nah, I would say you know either side. It's pros and cons to both of it. Yeah. Well, simply put, uh, when it does, when you when you are back at your locker with a whole bunch of media in front of you, that means that things are back to normal. So that's exactly what we want to to see exactly. here in the world. So, so what are some of your your takeaways? So some of the things that stood out to you. Uh, in your week 17 victory over the Bears uh, as you looked at film and just kind of reflect on uh, the big win? Yeah, I think kind of looking over the past few weeks, really the whole month of December, um, I think we were able to make big strides as an offense and as a team at, um, and a wholesome as well. You know, we were able to really finish out games. The Panther game, you know, was probably our biggest hiccup in that sense. But, you know, you get the Tennessee game um, last week, you look at this week, this, uh, yesterday, um, and how we were able to finish the games. Um, our defense stepping up tremendously in the second half. Um, and I think we're really playing our, our best football right now. And, and like Devontae had said, um, having the ultimate confidence going into January is, is something huge. And knowing that we're playing at home in our in our own stadium, you know, we know that we our next flight that we have to take will be down to Tampa, and that's not for another four weeks, five weeks or so. Um, so there's a lot of um, confidence that, that you can be able to build from that be able to relax and knowing that um, you're not having to travel and make adjustments and play on the road. Confidence. He's mm-hmm. confident. Looking forward to that next flight down to Tampa, Florida. There is a virtual <laughs> crowd. All right. Rowdy here yeah. tonight. Ricardo, you have some online stuff? I do. And this, uh, obviously for Alan, um, Tracy Santos uh, has a question specifically about the uh, red zone showed you kicking a soccer ball in the end zone pregame. Is that always how you warm up, or does it vary with the soccer ball? Uh, so I actually started integrating the soccer ball as part of my warm-up every single day. Um, during the camp, actually, I believe is when I first started using the soccer ball. Um, and then actually once I had gotten hurt and had to have surgery, I used it to be a part of my rehab warming up because actually the muscle that I had to get surgery on um, is the main muscle that you use to kick the ball. So just kicking the ball against the wall, um, juggling it, um, just kind of just playing around with it. it. Has one helps me get warmed up, and it makes warming up a lot easier and a lot more fun, I guess. But also, I think it helps my game a little bit with keeping light on my feet and um, to be able to control my my body a little bit better. But um, as far as warming up with it for the games, I've only used the soccer ball to warm up uh, for away games. For home games, I usually just stay in the locker just because I'm really used to the environment. Um, I kind of have like my own routine when I'm here at home, but on the road, I kind of use a soccer ball to go out to the field to, to embrace the environment, feel the weather out. Um, it's an outside game, obviously, and just kind of um, get accustomed to the setting. Hmm. Great question for Tracy Santos. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we have a, another pretty interesting question from uh, a Louis, uh, I think was on oh, put right. on your desk. Oh, right, earlier. Uh, Let me look but, at but this. But no, I'll, I'll ask Alan. You look, you look up that question okay. here in a second. I think it was put on your desk, Ricardo. But right. uh, Alan, you got a week off. All right. How are you going to maintain this yes. momentum? How are you going to stay engaged mentally and even physically so that uh, you don't have any rust to knock off uh, when you do get back uh, out there next week? Yeah, I think for me personally, um, and as a team as well, you know, we're really set on our end goal, obviously going out of Tampa and to be able to bring Lombardi home, Lombardi Trophy home back to Green Bay where it belongs. But I think, you know, you kind of got to be able to work back from that. And to be able to address this bye week and make sure that we're all handling it the best way possible as far as treating our bodies right, making sure we get enough sleep and everything. And then just knowing that once this bye week is over and once we figure out what, who our opponent is for our first game, of knowing that we're basically on a 14-day schedule of being able to play two games. And once if we win those two games, we'll be re- rewarded with going to the Super Bowl with another um, bye week as well. So I think the schedule is very obviously set up in our favor, being the number one seed and having the bye week. Um, so we just got to be able to take advantage of it. And it's an everyday thing. And, you know, we just got to know that we can't take the foot off of the gas now. Carl, do you have something else? Yeah, we have, from Louie from online, uh, he asked, instead of trash talk, what is the nicest or funniest thing an opposing player has said to you during a game? So maybe some okay. colorful, witty, non-threatening banter. Reverse trash yeah. talk. Um, you know, most of the time there's not much trash talking going on. You know, I think there's probably more trash talk in college just because there's a lot more emotion in the game and everything. But I think a lot of people in the NFL, 
everyone's just out there having fun, trying to do their job, um, and, and knows that we're all working together at the end of the day. Um, so a lot of time, you know, like for instance, I got tackled on um, that that drag route yesterday at like the three or four yard line, and I forgot the guy's name. Fifty five though, you know, he kind of saw me after the play. I'm like, I was telling him I was mad at him for not letting me able to get in. You know, it's kind of just joking, having fun. Um, throwing jabs at each other in that way, but very lightheartedly, um, you know, and then after the game, it's, it's all love and everything. And obviously everyone just cares about each other's safety and health and that we're able to all walk off the field at the end of the game. Interesting question from Louis. Great question. We thank Tracy. Yep. A couple more and then we'll, uh, we have to give our canvas print giveaway. We have to announce who's uh, winning this, the, the Alan Lazard signed print. We also have a couple of big announcements regarding next week's show and, and uh, moving forward, all that good stuff. So um, let me think here. Devontae's a weapon, obviously. You're a weapon. Aaron Jones is a weapon. Robert Tunyon's a weapon. Jamal Williams is a weapon. I'm, miss, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing even some other guys. Who's that, who's that uh, Daphne? Dominique Daphne. We'll Where talk did he about, come from? Well, we'll talk about that in a second. But, Alan, I thought the narrative <laughs> at the beginning of the year, you needed more weapons. And, and all, you, all you guys did was finish atop the league in points scored and I think fifth in the league in average yards per game. Now, come on, be honest. That, that had to be a motivator in the locker room among the offensive guys that, uh, no, we, we've got plenty of weapons right here in this locker room as it is. Yeah, I think all of us took the, that narrative that was kind of circling around um, April and that lingered around the summer um, personally. You know, I know I did for sure them, you know, talking a lot about not drafting the receiver against skill players. But I think, you know, the success that we have has been a lot of credit to obviously guys like Devontae and, and Aaron um, and an outstanding online, you know. They, they say that I'm the unsung hero, but I really think the, the O-line, you know, the guy, what those guys have done this year with guys getting injured, going down, um, throughout the games, the adjustments that they've made and be able to maintain the success, success that they've had. Um, you know, we're not able to have the success on the outside on the perimeter without those guys being able to hold up guys like 96 um, and 52 last week um, to allow Aaron to be able to get the ball out of his hands to us down the field. So. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is just our, our team charisma um, that we all carry by each other. We're all having fun out there. And, and ultimately, you know, we're all on the same page because we're, we're going for the same goal. So I think a lot of it, you know, just goes credit to as a team and individuals of coming together, making those sacrifices and, and the coaches putting in the work on the front end and preparing us for each and every game. Now, I kind of asked – Aaron and Devonte earlier to kind of reflect maybe on this whole strange season, COVID era, you know, and kind of what it has meant to fans to as an escape and just the team unity and how you've been able to cultivate that without being able to hang out together. So I'm going to ask you now uh, maybe a reflective question, but uh, you look at the makeup of your team. I've got in the contributions you've gotten from Robert Tunyon, Chris Barnes, Dominique Daphne, we saw it yesterday, not only with uh, the score, but then the big special teams hit uh, on kickoff right right after that. Chandon Sullivan, Alan Lazard, yourself. I'm sure I'm missing uh, some other guys, but uh, the common denominator, undrafted guys that, that are making big impacts on a Super Bowl caliber team. So uh, the story isn't finished yet, obviously, on, on the 2020 Green Bay Packers, but uh, how do you think you're going to – define these th this group and how what you, how are you going to look back on this team 10 20 years from now as as you kind of re reflect on your career and the, the the crazy season that 2020 was yeah just from the standpoint of the whole entire season obviously this is very life changing for all of us um whether you're playing football or, or whatever just kind of living in today's society with everything going on um there's constant change kind of going on um, so it, it'll be interesting to look back on it in the next decade or so of, of what the year 2020 was, especially this season on everything that we had to deal with, um, all the obstacles and adversities that, that were presented throughout the season. But as far as a team standpoint, you know, every day I, 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 I go in and I'm, I'm so thankful that I play on such a talented team. You know, I, I have really, really talented teammates. Um, obviously, you know, we had seven guys be all pro this year. But there's obviously way more than just that um, that we have in our locker room. And the the standard is so high and, and the demand for excellence is, is 
consistently the same every single day. So it just brings out the best of us. And, and I think that's what I'm so excited for and with, with the team that we have. But also know that, you know, the future, I, I may not play with play on, a, on a, as good a team like this, of just being able to take as much as I can in every single day and, and uh, not take it for granted. Last thing, what's left? What's left for this offense to accomplish now? You've done it all, right? I mean, again, one of the highest scoring, definitely the highest scoring team in the league, but one of the most explosive units. What's left for you guys? Is there, is there still some stuff in that playbook that uh, you're just kind of waiting to show off? Yeah, I think, you know, the coaches, especially having two weeks to prepare for our first game, um, essentially will be able to dial up a lot of good plays. Um, but I think what's ultimately left for us is the Lombardi Trophy. You know, the individual success, you know, the the, the, the offensive unit success that we've had this year, you know, I think that's kind of, we understand that, that that's done and over with. The regular season's gone, and now there's only one goal and one goal only. You know, it doesn't matter how we get there or how we achieve it. But is that is the point that we get there, and I think everyone's really locked in and honed in on that, on that main goal, and I think that's a big reason why we'll get there. All right, let's hear that virtual round of applause again. The show is starting to wind down. We were like in the we were in the two minute drill the first half of the show <laughs> to make sure that uh, we could get the guys uh, some questions before they had to get going. So, and uh, now we're sort of in that uh, the nice that like that twelve play seventy six yard drive you had yesterday yeah. uh, with the conversation here. All right, Alan, you know what it's time for. Everybody's favorite segment. It is time for something cool from Alan Lazard's house. Roll it, Rosie. <laughs> So here, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's been a, that's been a fun part of this segment. So I appreciate the video um, and doing this whole segment. This is one of my favorite parts of this show as well. But um, I'll take advantage right now and let you guys know this is one of the samples that we have coming out um, with ATT. It's a bomber jacket. Um, whoops. There it is. There it goes. Yep. Some, some pretty simple right now of what we're doing, but we are in the plans and getting pre-orders out here soon to be able to make sure that's out open to the public for you guys to be able to order um, your ATT merchandise and to get that up and running. That looks yeah, sharp. That looks very sharp. Very sharp. Can, can can you give out information on how to order? Or is that that that's not still available yet? It's it's not. Yeah, we don't have that finalized yet. Um, okay. I'll definitely put out stuff on my social media, Twitter. Instagram. Um, you can follow us on Instagram as well as at the top, at at the top, um, on Instagram. Of, and then we also have uh, at the top doc life um, is our web page. Um, it's all in my bio. It's on on the internet as well um, for my social media accounts. So to be able to go out there and to, and to see the the videos that we have, you know, we just actually released a podcast, um, which I'll be releasing on my social media tomorrow. But we actually released a podcast, our first episode this last Friday on January 1st. So it's up on YouTube. Um, it's on Spotify as well. And it'll be up on Apple Music as well here shortly. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're, we're taking off with ATT and or at the top and hopefully be able to get merchandise out here soon to all you guys and uh, make it a lot more interactive so you guys can follow along on our journey. Excellent. I like it. That's I good stuff too. for Carter. Cool you stuff. don't get any. Yeah. You don't get any. Alan's been very generous. Not to you. Not to you. Next segment's going to be something, I said it before, something cool in the, in the, in the doors behind Alan Lazard. We, we still got to see what he's hiding behind those two doors. So, Hey, normally we would go up north with Mark Olenichik Realty. If you are buying or selling real estate in northeast Wisconsin, contact the licensed professional realtors at Mark, Ol uh, Mark Olenichik Realty. Call 920-432-1007 or visit olej.com. But there's no game to predict, no Packers game to pr predict. But I was told that I must put on the victory visor anyway. So it's still going on my head. Let me hear the uh, the round of applause because this thing has okay. got magical powers. And I'll put it on next week's show as well. But let's predict the Bears-Saints game. Saints speaking 83, of, Bears 3. Speaking of magical, Coach Ditka somehow found the Bears a way to get into the playoffs. Thank you to Coach. We appreciate all the help 
that you give the Bears. Hey, do I think it's going to be easy win? No. Are they uh, predictably underdogs? Yes, almost by 10 points. Let me tell you something. There's been some six seeds that have done some damage, one in particular from Lambeau about a decade ago. It can happen. It's happened six times, actually, that uh, six seed has made it to the Super Bowl. I haven't given, hope, given up hope. There's a chance. All you had to do was get in the tournament. We'll see what happens. I'm predicting a Bears win and a rematch with the Packers at Lambeau. Woo! Good. I'm sure the Packers would exactly <laughs> want that, too. They'll, they'll take that rematch uh, without a doubt. So, uh, Packers news app, Ricardo. We're yeah. winding down. That's right. Uh, with your one-stop shop for award-winning photos and videos from USA Today Network, Wisconsin's Packers coverage team. That Packers news app, your one-stop shop for complete coverage of the Green Bay Packers. This app available for iPhone and Android users only, Brett. Again, uh, and by the way, congratulations to the Bears for backing in yes, to the playoffs. Just got to get like in. Losing yet still making the playoffs by uh, our friends again, Olenichik Realty. Mark Olenichik Realty would like to thank Northeast Wisconsin for 40 years of real estate success. Put their success to work for you. Call Mark Olenichik Realty at 920 432 1007 or visit olej.com. Hey, our guy, Mark Mayfield of Mayfield Sports Marketing, great working with him, a leading Wisconsin sports marketing agency and speaker bureau. And I always have to give a shout out to Mike Thiel of Eric Lives here for our intro yes. and outro music. We have two things to do, Alan. Should we give away your, your signed canvas Ooh. print? Ricardo, can you hold that up? Yes. All right, yes. there it is. Since November 2nd and through last week's show, we've been displaying keywords that you needed to collect so you could enter into the drawing for this very cool 16 by 20 canvas print signed by Alan Lazard. There were eight keywords in total, and they were, again, Lizard, Cyclones, Urbandale, Somersault, Crown, ATT, Hurdle, and Playoffs. Those were the eight. We received Who won it? Well, let me say it. Okay. Hold on, Ricardo. <laughs> we received quite a few emailed entries with those correct keywords. I was busy, and I entered those names into our randomized drawing. So it's time to announce the person with the winning entry. Congratulations, Rosie, put it up, to Dawn Reinwand. Reinwand, there Dawn Reinwand. You have won the canvas print signed by the lizard. Dawn, I'll be reaching out to you via email. What do you think, lizard? That's awesome. Congratulations, Dawn. Yes. So we will get that out in the mail shortly. Also... Playoffs. We got to talk about the playoffs here, Alan, before you do the final word. Programming note. We will have a show next week, but the Lizard is taking the week off. He, he's getting a much needed breather during the bye week, but we will still be doing a, a, a show. Um, As will I'll be taking a breather. We don't care that, uh, that you're not going to be here, Ricardo. So uh, let me just uh, uh, announce that. So again, no show next week. But uh, we will have a very special guest sitting in for Allen yes. next week. Will be Green Bay Packers legend, Pro Football Hall of Famer, and master Vince Lombardi storyteller Jerry Kramer will be here. Let's hear the virtual round of applause for that friend of the show. Friend of the show. More details to come on our Facebook page at facebook.com/clubhouse live. Give us a like, please. Jerry Kramer, Allen, you would like. Meeting Jerry Kramer, very cool guy. Some, uh, if you can ever get a chance to chat with number 64, you got to do it. Absolutely. All right. You got the final word tonight, Lizard. It's been an odd sort of show, but we got it done. Yeah, yeah, it has. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Devante and Aaron, even though they're not here, obviously. But uh, got to give up to you, Brett, too, as well as handling this conundrum of a show that we've had <laughs> a lot of juggling today. last second a lot of juggling way, way to handle the first part of the segment uh, i appreciate that I'm, I'm i don't know how you do it <laughs> sometimes but uh thank you um ricardo as well um, i won't thank give you as much of a compliment but uh <laughs> hey, alan <laughs> alan you. hold on could you compliment me a little bit more oh, before uh, a couple more compliments before He's you very go on needy yes i appreciate the i appreciate the visor it looks a lot it looks very well on you <laughs> um the, the coach did cut thing, you know, got yeah. respect for the guy, but wouldn't want to see him on my show any much longer. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for everyone else, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, for the, those of you who tuned in from week one, um, those of you joined throughout the season, and those of you just tuning in tonight, thank you so much for, for joining me. Um, and I really appreciate everyone out there tuning in. 
um, and all the support that you've had for me personally, but even more so us Packers as a team and organization. And cannot cannot wait to be able to bring Alan Lombardi tro- Trophy home where it belongs. That would be one fun Clubhouse Live celebration. So let's uh, take one step at a time, but let's think about it. Yeah. Can only we can, we can dream big, right, Ricardo? Oh, yeah. Right, Alan. So, all right, for the lizard, for a rod, what's uh, for Tay, <laughs> for Ricardo, hey. and the crew with USA Today Network Wisconsin. I don't have a nickname. I'm just I'm just Brett. I'm Brett Christofferson. Saying so long. Be back here next Monday with Green Bay Packers legend and Pro Football Hall of Famer Jerry Kramer as we get ready for the big Packers playoff push. And then join us again two weeks, uh, Monday night, 6.30 p.m., as we rejoin and uh, talk about a big Packers playoff win with that guy. In the middle of your screen, it is Green Bay Packers wide receiver, number 13, Allen the Lizard, Lizard. Mean Gene, you're out there. Take it away. Go, Pack, go. Go, Pack, go. Green and gold.